I am Cassie. I'm a client success manager at Searchmetrics, and I work with a lot of clients across different industries, and one common ask I get is how to uncover content gaps. So I'm going to quickly walk through a really helpful workflow that my clients find valuable, and that's how to identify, prioritize, and optimize content. I'm going to use Tasty as an example. They're successful on social media with their video recipes, and I've been finding them a lot more in organic searches lately. I'm also going to take a look at some of their vegan recipes since I've actually seen a really increasing trend around those searches lately, and I suspect they have really good content that's just being buried. So starting with looking at how to identify URLs and high potential for growth, I'm looking for ideal candidates for a content refresh based on new competition, seasonality, trends, or simply an underperformance in their really high volume keywords. You can identify underperforming pages via live searches or diving into website analytics, but I'm going to take a look at a graph within search metrics. I'm looking at here in the research cloud, looking at the top performing URLs page, and then I'm going to take a look at this high potential URLs. This graph, it's going to break out pages on the site that can stand to gain a lot in terms of average position and monthly visits. So I've included that URL filter to zoom on anything that includes vegan in the URL. And then here in this graph, what you can see is a list of URLs as well as, well as their top five performing keywords. You can see the number of keywords that they rank for. You can see their average position and then traffic index or the estimated amount of monthly visits they're getting based on ranking keywords, search volume and position in the search engine results page. Now, why the traffic index number is so crucial is I can see the direct benefit of how many visits they can stand to gain from some simple optimization, which is going to be this delta column right here. And that's going to be the difference in the current traffic and their potential traffic. So this entire graph is actually ranked highest to lowest, meaning I can move that average position up and based on fresh content and some relevant content, they'll see a really large gain. So I want to look through this list and find a URL that has some room for growth based on the data provided for ranking keywords and traffic. So working more closely on these sites, um, I probably ha would have some more business insight and know exactly where to start, where to optimize, have a little bit of industry knowledge on the site that I work so often with. I suspect these Disney or the breakfast and dinner pages are probably going to be aggregate with like a bunch of different list rankings. So I'm actually looking for one that is an individual ranking. And I like, let's take a look at this ice cream page. I have a feeling this is one individual recipe. So I'm just going to take a look at this. Uh, it sounds delicious. And I can already notice there's a few variety in the terms. So vegan ice cream, non-dairy ice cream. I suspect they probably rank for some like nut milk varieties of keywords. So this is a great one to take a look at. And this recipe ranks for almost 100 keywords here. It looks like they're missing out on about 6,500 monthly visits. So there's a lot of opportunity. They rank pretty low on page three, so what that's telling me is they do have some authority, but it's not really performing to its full potential. I suspect this is a really good candidate for some content refresh. Chances are it might not be targeting the proper keywords, like following that search interest. So, all right. Now that I've identified a really good URL combined with my knowledge on the site and maybe some of the its business goals, I can make really actionable decisions on how I want to research further and what needs to be done in order to optimize that article's content. If it's something like adding a few keywords, maybe restructuring the article or anything on the technical end. So next, I'm going to dive into this URL a little bit deeper and let's see what kind of keywords would make the biggest impact on this page's rankings. All right, so we just finished walking through how to identify high potential URLs to optimize, and I found a really good recipe for Tasty for their vegan ice cream. Now that I'm gonna take a deeper look at that URL and get a little more insight on how it's performing, what kind of keywords it's currently ranking for, and which keywords have the biggest impact for this page. So in Search Metrics, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this URL, and it will direct me to the URL details page. And this is gonna give some key insights on just this page. So here I can see the number of keywords that this URL ranks for, the cumulative search volume of all of those keywords, and then that traffic index potential we were just taking a look at. And then more importantly, what I want to do is analyze the keywords that this individual URL ranks for. I want to see what positions they're in, what kinds of keywords have a higher search volume, and from there decide on what angle I want to approach for this article depending on that search interest. So taking a look at the keywords here, this is going to be all of those keywords that they rank for. 
let's take a look at this vegan ice cream for an example. So this is currently ranking in position 24. It has an estimated monthly visit of about 16. And that delta is showing that there's more than 5,000 monthly visits that we can capitalize on by optimizing for this, by optimizing the content for this keyword. So I can follow this practice throughout the rest of these keywords and really accurately predict how much potential this article has. By looking at this research, we can identify exactly which keywords are most important to our URL. And this helps us establish a direction we're taking when it comes to optimizing. So looking at some of these, I would say there's a lot more potential around vegan ice cream as a keyword than maybe something around cashew ice cream or cashew milk ice cream or even non-dairy ice cream based on the potential that I'm seeing here in this delta number. So next, what I can do is take this insight and find related keywords that rank highly and evaluate those keywords that our competitors are using that we might be missing out on. Now that I've done some research on identifying keywords that are most important to this page, I want to take that one step further and find keywords that are related or keywords that my competitors are using that I might not be using. So I'm gonna navigate and take this vegan ice cream keyword into the Topic Explorer tool so that I can identify some of those semantically related keywords and evaluate their potential. So what this is gonna do is show me this really helpful topic bubble, maybe some of the keywords that Tasty is not ranking for but are really important to the topic as a whole. Generates this bubble to show our core keyword as well as some of the keywords that are related. You'll see a legend over here on the side, but basically what it's doing is breaking down keywords that are related to our core topic of vegan ice cream. I can see ones that have larger bubbles here are gonna have a higher search volume versus smaller bubbles might have a little bit lower of a search volume. And then I can also see how they're related to one another through some of these stems and exactly how all of these topics and keywords make sense together. What's really helpful is I can click onto any of these different topics and look into topic details to see a little bit more insight on the search volume, the cost per click, the search intent, which I'll go through in just a second, as well as the seasonality of that topic. And then lastly, I can see what the position looks like for all of our competitors. So this is a live version of the SERP. This saves me from having to go and do actual live searches for all these keywords, because what I can do is actually come in here and see exactly who's ranking for this. I wanna look and see folks like The Kitchen, PETA, Vegan.com, some of these different competitors that are gonna have very similar content to mine and the type of SERP that I wanna be competitive in versus maybe coming in here and taking a look and seeing some of those that don't really fit the type of content that I'm looking to compete against. So this is very, very helpful and saves me some time here. In addition to any of these, I can also remove anything I don't find helpful just so I can keep this topic a little bit more focused. For instance, something like vegan ice, that's just ice, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove that topic. And I can customize this based on exactly what I'm looking for. So it's a very, very helpful insight just to get those last minute steps or items that I would have maybe not noticed just from looking purely at Tasty's URL. So I can look a little deeper into this and take a peek at seasonality. So here I'll follow that same legend over here on the side. What this is telling me is there's a lot more search volume around summer and even spring for this topic, which is not surprising for ice cream, but it'll give me a little hint to say, you know what, I probably shouldn't be writing this article in November because it's not gonna have a lot of search interest until later on in the year, and I wanna optimize and push fresh content when it's gonna have the highest potential for gain. Next, I can take a look at competitiveness, and then I like to kind of see something like this where there's a good mixture of any of these. It'll give me some insight on what Google's charging for any AdWords for things like this. And it's helpful for me because if I'm writing an article and I see something that's very competitive, Google's charging a lot of money for these cost per clicks, what it's telling me is chances are even if I get into position one, I might be buried beneath a few different paid listings that'll push me a little bit farther down the page. So I do like to see a good healthy amount of competition in the paid side, but at the same time, I don't wanna be overwhelmed with paid ads. And then lastly, search intent. This is gonna give me some insight on, based on the elements that are on the SERP page, if this is an informational, a navigational, or a transactional search. I really don't wanna have an article or a recipe based in a search that includes a lot of purchase and buy verbiage, maybe product listing ads, something that's heavily transactional. At the same time, navigational is gonna be very branded, maybe something like Nike, where it's gonna have a business listing, uh, Nike listed a few times, site links, it's very much owned by one brand. I don't wanna be competitive in that. I really wanna be competitive in the informational space because I wanna see a lot of informational content, 
folks are coming here to look up an actual recipe for what I'm trying to write, and that's precisely what I'm trying to optimize for. So now that I've got this topic, I'm really confident in the vegan ice cream. I like what I'm seeing across all of these different areas. I've gone ahead and evaluated its potential and chosen a really good strategy from this core keyword. So next, I'm going to start optimizing based on this research and based on what my competitors are doing. All right. And then my last step is to move easily into optimizing this recipe based on helpful insights provided from our competitors on page content. So what I would do from here is go ahead and create a brief. A brief is simply one piece of content that I want to optimize or create from scratch if you're starting from there. This brief will be dedicated to the vegan ice cream URL. So here I would go ahead and select that tasty project that I've created in our software, which houses all of the incredible work and content that I've been doing for this website. So I've already created this brief. What I'm going to do is obtain clear guidance based on search data directly in the, in the content editor. This is going to be updating statistics in real time to give you the best results for ranking. What this tool is doing is analyzing all of my competitors and giving me guidelines on how to optimize my article based on their on-page content. So here it's showing me all of those competing URLs that we saw in the beginning, some insights on their title, position, word count, etc. And then what's really helpful in this tool is what it's doing is scoring that content. So I've went ahead and grabbed all of the content directly from this vegan ice cream page on Tasty. I've plugged it into the content editor to go ahead and score. And then you'll see everything here on the left hand and right hand side that what it's doing is analyzing my content based on am I hitting the correct word count according to some of my competitors? Is my sentence structure and am I repetitive? Are those on point? How is my keyword coverage? So it's looking at all of those keywords that are used on other competing pages and saying how frequently I should use some of these keywords. It'll also give me some insight on how to use some of those phrases, a little bit of information on exactly what that is. And then it'll rank those into tiers saying these are the keywords that you need to have most frequently, some of the recommended keywords, and then a little bit of additional insight on keywords that could be helpful. So this tool is really, really helpful to kind of score my content as I'm writing. It'll update all of this and update our overall content score, which we want to be somewhere around 75% to start seeing that benefit in terms of results. So now what I could do as soon as I optimize all of this content, I can grab it and publish all of these changes directly to the site and see the really large benefits from fresh and relevant content that's really customized to our audience for this individual vegan recipe. So I hope this workflow was really helpful and gave you some actionable takeaways for how to research and interpret and really take next steps towards closing in on those content gaps for your website. Thank you.